Hey guys, my name is Andrew, and in this video, I'm gonna show you start to finish transforming the room from this to this. And it's been about six months since the idea of this room was conceived and I can hardly believe that we're actually here. I was just watching some YouTube videos after I just quit my job and came across a video of Colt Caparoon and Mike Miller talking about how Atmos is the future of music. And I did some research on it and I honestly think I agree and got really excited about that and was like, wait a second, I'm in a perfect opportunity to do something about this. And boom, here we are. I ordered stuff about six months ago. <laughs> Foolishly, you know, my, my Amazon Prime brain thought, you know, within a, at most a month, I'll be able to get all this stuff in and we'll be running, it'll be awesome. Here we are six months later. Uh, that's for a number of reasons, but let's just jump to delivery day and kind of see why some of that has happened. Well. I wasn't here for the actual delivery, and it turns out they didn't deliver everything, so I am just texted the delivery driver hoping he'll come back and give me all the stuff, but we still have a ton of boxes here. So one of the like little things that you deal with when you build a studio is you need speaker stands. Seems pretty obvious. Um, started doing some research, and it turns out the like go-to speaker stands are $1,300 a pair. I'm doing a 914 Atmos setup, which means there are nine speakers around me at ear level, which would mean I would need 10 pairs of stands. Come on, $6,500 for speaker stands? There's got to be a better way. So, like I said, I did more research, basically found out that these, these speaker stands, what makes them so great is that they're basically like filled with a material, kind of like sand, and because of that, they don't resonate very much and it is really good for keeping vibrations from the speaker away from the room. You hear that? That's horrible for sound quality. I basically just found some speaker stands online for like a hundred bucks a pair. Went to Home Depot, got some sand, filled them up. They've been great. All right, well, as I wait for the rest of the equipment to show up, I'm gonna go get the sand to fill the, the stands. And I did the math and it looks like it's gonna be basically exactly three bags. So I'm just gonna try to buy three bags, see if that works. They're super cheap, they're like five bucks a bag or something. So we'll see how this goes. All right, $17.15 later, we have it and we're on our way back. So yeah, um, they lost an entire pallet of equipment. It's not Sweetwater's fault, it's clearly the shipping company's fault, but I really don't understand. <laughs> like, it's not my problem, I didn't have to pay for any of it, Sweetwater was amazing, they immediately shipped all the stock that they had, that I had ordered, and really rushed the rest of it and got it to me pretty quickly, but man, uh, losing a pallet, pretty impressive. In the midst of me doing all the research, trying to figure out what I wanted the studio to be like, look like, all of that, I realized that a lot of the really cool studios that I liked had colored lighting. Throughout the room, there are eight of these lights on the side of the wall, and I thought I'd mix it up with some colorful light bulbs. So I found these light bulbs by the same company that makes those Wise cameras. Um, and these are only like $11 a piece compared to the Hugh Phillips stuff that's like, 50 bucks a piece, so I'm gonna give these a shot. I'll be honest, of all the colors I expected them to turn on, flashing green was not what I expected. I'm sure I just need to pair it to an app or something. All right, I got the app installed and logged in. I'm just gonna click add device. Let's see if it works. Hey. Whoa. 
Why are you being weird? All right, I'm currently updating the firmware on light bulbs, so that's where we're at now. All right, we'll come back to how I ended up fixing all the lighting issues later, but it was about at that point where I realized I really need to get serious about what I'm gonna do for acoustic treatment in this space. After a bunch of research, I kind of landed on a company called Geek Acoustics. And the reason I went with them is really two things. They had a bunch of products, so I knew I could kind of just order everything through them, which is really what I wanted to do. And they also had like really cool design ones, which I wanted just so it's not all just completely black panels everywhere. I wanted it to look pretty nice. They also had an amazing service that honestly sealed the deal for me, which was they offer free acoustical engineer consultation. So I was basically able to email back and forth um, some drawings of the room size and shape and everything, explain to him what I was going to do with Atmos, all of that. And he came back after a few emails back and forth of deciding exactly what we wanted to do with a full 3D CAD drawing and a list of exactly what I needed to order, all for free. So yeah, obviously the product's a little more expensive and I'm sure you pay for it just in that, but awesome experience overall. My original plan was just kind of to, you know, buy a bunch of normal four inch wall panels or whatever, put them everywhere and just hope for the best. Definitely glad I didn't do that. It's taken a lot more kind of effort in this area than I expected. And I'm really glad that I have some of the thicker and more specialized stuff that they offer. Now that we had acoustic panels taken care of, I really needed to move on to DSP. How was I gonna get all of these speakers to work together as one and sound right? And that's where this magic box comes in. This is the Trenov Demon, and man, oh man, that thing is most of the reason why this honestly took so long because they're hard to get, but also what makes this room so worth it. All right, let's talk a little bit of signal flow real quick. So I'm basically mixing on the laptop, sending audio out of the laptop through a single Thunderbolt cable into the Lynx Aurora. And that is my converter. So that is what takes the digital audio signal and converts it into an, an analog signal that can be sent to the speakers. That then goes to the Trinov Demon, which does all the correction DSP like we talked about. There's a cable <laughs> that goes between the Lynx and the Demon that is a, uh, it's called a DB25 cable. Seems fairly simple. It basically didn't work, um, but even more confusing than it not working is I would only get two channels of signal. It would only go out channels five and six and would come into the second box through input seven and eight. So of the eight channels that I could go out, one, two, three, four, nothing, seven, eight, nothing, five and six. If I go out five and six, it will get to the second box but it'll only come in channel seven and eight. Nowhere else does it work. This drove me mad. <laughs> Considering that I was already getting great, so, I mean, I had stereo, cause you know, I had two channels at that point and it sounded amazing. Like the quality was fantastic. So I go, well, obviously the cable works. This has gotta be some weird software, firmware issue. I'll deal with it down the road. It's clearly, it can't be that big of a deal. Um, it was, I mean, look, it wasn't actually a big deal, but it took forever for me to get the right answer as far as what was actually the problem. As it turns out, the DB25 connector is not one cable. Like there's basically like three or four different types of connectors that can have a DB25 end on them. Why is this so confusing? Anyway after buying two different adapters and a whole new cable, it's finally working, so. So at this point, we have most of the stuff here. It's time to just start getting the panels and the ceiling speakers mounted. Before I get any comments, a little bit of a disclaimer here. I am not particularly handy when it comes to building things with my hands, and this is not my house, so, you know, I didn't want to just go poking holes in walls, trying to hang things, kind of guessing. There's ceiling mounted stuff in here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. So 
My dad, who knows way more about all this stuff, helped me out a ton. And uh, you're gonna see a lot of footage of me just kind of standing there watching him. But thank you, dad. Now that all the panels are up, I need to actually place all the speakers and figure out where they need to exactly be. All right, so I have all the speakers roughly placed and now I get to use this program, uh, which is really just an Excel document called a DART, I think D-A-R-D-T, that basically tells me exactly where each speaker is supposed to go. You put in your room dimensions, you can even put in the individual speakers you're using and it will calculate if they're gonna be loud enough to meet the Dolby standard, whole bunch of stuff like that. But now I get to fine tune measurement exactly where all these speakers go. So wish me luck. At this point, we're getting pretty close. Like we have everything here. The ceiling speakers are mounted in place. There's foam on the ceilings, on the walls. The desk is here. All this stuff is going. We've got some issues though. The first one was an odd one. Uh, take a listen. So like the speaker eventually calms down and the buzzing almost entirely goes away and it sounds totally fine, uh, but clearly something was wrong with that one. So Otto was great, sent him a quick message, sent him the video. Within like two or three days, I had a new one here all as well. The second issue we realized pretty much immediately when we started putting up all the ceiling speakers, which is that I, I have these like isoacoustic um, mounts for the ceiling that basically decouple the speaker from the ceiling so that like it isn't vibrating the whole ceiling. Um, as part of that, there's like three different pieces that they all come in. I had like the C bracket instead of the L bracket. Long story short, they were basically, they could only aim like from straight down to 45 degrees and I needed it to be like 50 degrees for it to like actually be aimed at me. So we ended up needing to replace those as well. Same idea, I went and found some on stock on some website, ordered them, and the old brackets are being shipped back to Sweetwater as we speak. So this issue kind of popped up pretty much immediately when I started listening to the whole system in Atmos, which was that center speaker being on its side seems like it's generally fine, but because of the way that the tweeter is like, you know, more high-end information, which is already more directional to your ears, it ended up sounding like the center image was shifted like off to the side and it was driving me crazy. So we ended up having to take the center speaker, make it vertical and then chop the stand. Uh, I think we cut like seven inches off of it so that it can sit vertically and be generally at the same height as the rest of the speakers and the room. Finally, the lights. So the issue there was frustrating, but thankfully pretty simple. Basically just the switch on the wall had a, I think they call it rheostat on it so you could like dim them. Uh, these lights hated that and it just wouldn't work with it. So we took, there's, uh, you know, in the li open living room, there was a normal switch that we just swapped the switches and now that room has dimmable lights and the switch in here is just a normal switch. But these lights are dimmable with an app because they're digital. And here we are. The room is done. I honestly can't believe it. it. It's sounding so good in here. Like Atmos sounds awesome. And even just stereo mixes, it's the easiest it's ever been to mix. Like I, I've always kind of known this to be true, but this whole thing has really cemented it in my mind that you can only fix what you can hear. And so your monitoring as a mixing engineer is absolutely critical. Like. How could you possibly be expected to fix something that you can't hear properly? It doesn't make any sense. This has made my life so much easier. I've only done a couple of mixes in here since it's all been like really done, but they've taken like half the time and turned out better than most of the stuff I've ever done before anyway. Like it's, I'm so excited about this. As for Atmos, uh, if you haven't heard the rock version of Demi Lovato's song, Confident in full Atmos, it sounds huge. <laughs> it's so cool. Six months later, I can finally start doing work in this room and I am so psyched. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm share it with more people. And while you're at it, 
subscribe to the channel. Now that I have this room ready to go and finished, I'm gonna be able to make way more content in here on a much more regular basis, and I, I really think you guys are gonna enjoy it. All right, see you guys in the next video. Thank you.